Good evening and welcome to City Year. My name is Daniel Reddy. And I'm Kristen Strobe, and we are proud Corps members serving at City Year Chicago. You are watching a live interactive call-in television program brought to you by CAN-TV 21. During the next 25 minutes, we invite you to call in with your questions with the number below, 312-738-1060. City Year is a nonprofit organization that unites young people of all backgrounds for a year of full time service and leadership development, giving them the tools and opportunities to change the world. City Year focuses on building the graduation pipeline by getting students on track to graduate. City Year deploys diverse teams of 8 to 10 core members who provide assistance in attendance, behavior, and course performance for 6th through 9th grade students. City Year also engages community members in service projects including landscaping and painting that transform schools and communities throughout Chicago. For more information on City Year uh, or the service that we provide Chicago neighborhoods or how to get involved, uh, please, vid please visit us, us at our website, www.cityyear.org slash Chicago. There are a lot of different ways to get involved. Whether you're interested in serving with us for a day or joining the Corps for an entire year, all the information that you need can be found at our website. which is right here. Kristen has taken over the phone lines, so please call the number at the bottom of your screen if you have questions about City Year or questions for our guests. For tonight's episode, we have with us Molly Driggers, City Year Chicago Corps member serving at the Deloitte team at Orr Academy High School in the West Garfield Park community. Molly is here tonight to talk to us with uh, talk to talk with us about her experience as a core member and her role as the events and outreach coordinator at OR. Molly, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, City Year. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina originally. I'm 22, and I went to school at the University of Mary Washington in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and now I'm living in Chicago. And how did you find out about City Year? I found out about City Year because there's actually a City Year in Columbia, South Carolina, where I grew up. And so I kind of saw it while I was growing up, and I saw some of the projects that they did. And when it came time for me to graduate college, I spent my senior year really nervous about what I would do after graduation. And so I started looking into a lot of the different service um, options that are out there, especially through AmeriCorps, and I saw City Year again. I said, oh, I know City Year. Why not do it? And then I signed up and I, I got in and I was really, really excited. So why did you apply to City Year Chicago and not City Year South Carolina? Because I, um, my mom and my whole mom's side of my family is from Chicago, and so I really wanted to try somewhere new, and I thought, why not Chicago? Because I grew up visiting here a lot. I know a lot about Chicago. My grandparents still live here and so I still felt really connected to Chicago. So Molly, you work on a very diverse team. Can you tell me how the different experiences with your teammates contribute to the success of your team at OR? Definitely. Um, when I first joined City Year, I remember they asked me like about diversity in my interview and you know I instantly I thought that I knew what they were talking about and I gave my answer. But now that I've joined City Year, I've learned so much more that it's so much more than what I thought because um, everyone on my team has done such different things in their life and so when we work on a project or we're planning something or we're overcoming an obstacle with as, like, as a team and we're trying to find a solution they all come with different ideas and different input and it's made my experience so much better you know I'm not working with 10 other people that are exactly like me and just agree with me all the time. I'm working with 10 other people that constantly challenge me and really make me like think about what I'm doing and what I'm saying. So it's made it like a much better experience and I think it makes us a stronger team because, you know, we get to the best solution. Can you give me an example of how this has made you a stronger team? Um, definitely. I mean, we, you know, as the events and outreach coordinator, we work on a lot of events and when we're trying to come up with ideas for what we should do for our events. You know, everybody comes up with different things that they think we should do for the, like our family engagement nights that we have at our school. Everybody has like a different idea, whether it's we should do a talent show or we should have a sports night or we should do a cultural night. Um, and then, you know, we, we kind of compile all of that 
and we come up with a better thing. And the better your events are, the better you are as a team because you're doing better service. So because you are the events and outreach coordinator at OR, um, what specifically is your job managing that process on your team? I, <laughs> I would say I kind of act as like our party planner, <laughs> if okay. you want to give it kind of a name. Um, we have family engagement nights, which, like I just said, so we want to engage the parents at our school and the students and the uh, faculty and staff. And we, um, <laughs> we plan events for all of them, and they're really fun. And we, uh, I, so what I do is I take the input from my team, and then I create an idea of how it, how it should look. Oh. And then I bring that back to my team, and they say whether they agree with it or not. And then we go from there. And I kind of manage to make sure that everybody's doing their part. Um, to help out with the event. I don't do it all by myself. I mean, there are some things that I like take charge of for the most part. It's basic, basically managing what the rest of the team should be doing. So what would you say your favorite part about the events and outreach coordinator position is? Um, it's definitely right after an event that you've spent like right. a month planning finishes. And it's like this really great feeling of relief and like pride that, you know, that what you and your team just did was really awesome. And now it's over and you can just kind of enjoy the fun <laughs> relief. So more specifically, what events have you specifically been able to lead as you're in your position so far this year? We are actually in the process of planning another family engagement night um, as a talent, uh, a talent show. And so right now what I'm doing is I'm making sure that everything is on point to um, Get, be ready for March 3rd when we have our talent show. But I'm, I've also done a lot of like teacher appreciation things, which I really like doing. Actually, this morning we had a teacher appreciation breakfast, and that was really, that was really fun. So I'm sure you have a lot of talented kids there at OR. Um, how does your coordinator position help the team function and perform powerful service for those students? I would say I, I like our family engagement nights. Anything that involves the community or the parents, there are such few times when, um, as a at our school, that we get to do things with the parents. So hosting those those family engagement nights and getting to meet the parents is probably the best part um, about the power, like how my position in particular makes a powerful service. All right, Molly. It seems like we have a caller in here. Caller, what's your question? How you doing? This is Artist Monroe. Uh, my question is, um, so what is the, so far, what has been the hardest part of your service? I would say the hardest part of my service is, you know, we spend all day in the classroom with our students, and sometimes it can be challenging if, I mean, I'm also a person. I'm not, like, I don't have endless patient. I'm not just like a robot. I would say the hardest part yeah, is um, not is staying positive with my students because sometimes, you know, everybody's been in school. You're not always super excited to be there, but trying to stay positive and encouraging them. That's been the hardest part, but it's something that I think has also has challenged me, but has also helped me grow stronger. So All right. Thank you. Thank be strong. You. Thank you. So Molly, you work with high school students. Um, how, have you seen a change in student behavior and course performance since you came into the school? Definitely. I'm, I'm not going to lie and say that every single student I've worked with, but I, the majority of students, I, I've seen some sort of change. I mean, our after school tutoring is really, really popular. And we get a lot of students to come in after school and do tutoring. And I have one student in particular who comes almost every day and her grade in my class that I help her in went from an F to a B. And I'm not going to say, I mean, I'm, <laughs> she's a very smart student and it's a lot of it's her, but, you know, maybe if City Year hadn't been there to help her, she wouldn't have done that and she wouldn't have stayed motivated. And it's to the point that she's not just coming to do homework for my class, she's coming for all of her classes and all of her grades have improved. And we have a lot of students like that who come and then just also being like, somebody besides the teacher or a staff member who's not an authority figure, somebody that can really, you know, if they're having a bad day, it's not just like sit down and be quiet 
it's like, you know, well, what's going on? Like, talk to me about it. Can I help you? Like, tell me why you're not in the best mood, and then hopefully we can move on and you can get your work done. Well, I'm sure we appreciate the hard work of all, you know, the events that you put on in your entire team and making this sort of a change. Thank you, um, man. So, Molly, one final question here. What are your plans for next year? Well, I'm applying to be a senior core member with City Year. Oh, um, but it's a good job. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. So I have my interview tomorrow. We'll see. Um, but I'm also thinking about doing another year of service um, in a different avenue through AmeriCorps um, or try and get a real job <laughs> that lasts longer than a year. All right. Well, we're almost out of time here for this segment. Uh, so we need you... So we need to give you the boot, if you will. So as you know, uh, city or core members have to wear these Timberland boots here while they are while they are at work, and this on. boot specifically is full of questions. So I'd like you to put your hand in there, read a question out loud, and give us your answer. Okay. What's it gonna be? My heart is racing. Oh my goodness! If city year was a food, what food would it be? I think that City Year would be, <laughs> I think City Year would be a burrito because that's my favorite food. And which means City Year is your favorite too. Yeah. Right? All right. that too? Maybe that's a little cheesy, but. Cheese like and a burrito burritos. too, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Molly, thank you for taking your time to join us here this evening yeah, and sit here and you, share Jim. about your position in the EOC. Um, now after a short break, we will continue here with City Year. Give a year, change the world. change. People tell me. That's hilarious. Damn. <laughs> I mean, she was like raving. <laughs> Maybe you wave a little bit more. Wait, Molly, is this your No. Okay, I don't have my notes. It's okay. All right. Welcome back, everyone. I don't want to be welcome back. Do I take this one off? Yeah, you can switch it. Welcome back, everyone. My name is still Daniel Reddy with City of Chicago. Uh, the phone lines are open, so again, we'd like to invite you to call in with any questions you have to the number at the bottom of your screen, 312 738 one zero six zero. Joining us now is Mr. Kenneth Woods, a senior core member and one of my colleagues of uh, the team serving at Johnson School of Excellence in North Lawndale community. Kenneth is leading and supporting a team of core members through one of the most challenging years in their lives. Kenneth, welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited, Dan. So Kenneth, would you like to tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from? Sure. Um, so I grew up in Chicago. Well, I grew up in the South Suburbs, but I grew up in the Chicago land area. Uh, I was born here, though. Um, pre uh, before coming to City Year, I was at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. And um, so now I'm back in Chicago because I felt like Chicago was home and I really wanted to come and do service in Chicago. So how did you hear about City Year? I actually heard about City Year. Uh, I was going to apply for Teach for America. That's not really what I was looking to do, but it was an avenue for me to do service. And they have like also a list of other AmeriCorps organizations that that you would be interested in if you're interested in um, Teach for America. So I seen City Year. I did some research and looked on the website and all that other kind of stuff. And I thought, why not apply to City Year? All right. Well, Ken, you're a team leader at the Johnson School of Excellence in North Lawndale. What would you say your day-to-day -day routine is like at your school? Um, well, my day-to-day -day routine is, although it may not seem like a lot, I do I do a lot of the background work. Um, so normally when we first get in, um, we, um, we have our first circle with my team, and um, we have our first circle with our team, uh, check in with my team to let them know how the day is going. We normally go down to greet the kids for morning greeting to get them excited about coming to school, um, and that's really fun. Um, and then uh, school starts, and then for the most for the most part of the day, I'm you know I'm checking in in classrooms, doing observations, um, just checking in on the core members to make sure that everything is is okay. 
So can you give me like an example of one of those cheers you do for morning greeting? Um, we actually did one today and it was kind of fun. So the kids were coming in and we did uh, be excited, be, be excited, be. And so like we were all lining up and they came through and um, some of the kids really liked it and really enjoyed it. So so you, you have seen that be a, a, a positive impact on the school? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So remember our phone lines are open everyone. If you have any questions for Ken or about City Year, again the number's at the bottom of your screen, 312-738-1060. But we're going to continue on with the questions here. What would you say your favorite part about being a team leader at Johnson is, Kenneth? Um, I would say my favorite thing is uh, being back at Johnson for a second year uh, because that's where I served last year as a core member. Ah. Um, so being able to come back and to see the the kids that I worked with before um, and just to be back. Like, I just feel like after being there for a year, like, Johnson is home to me. I know the kids. I know the teachers and things like that. And it's just, it's, just a, it's just a nice feeling to have while I'm doing service and also to feel a part of the school. What's been the hardest transition from going from a core member in a school to being a senior core member in the same school? Um, I would say one of the hardest transitions is, it's not, nece it's not necessarily that transition specifically, but since we're working with different students, because uh, now City U was working with the uh, elementary grades, now we moved to middle school. So that's been challenging for me because I don't get to see my the elementary school kids that I worked with as much as, as I used to because I worked with them all the time. And, and sometimes that's really challenging because like I like to see the kids, they like to see me. Um, so I mean, I still get to interact with them, but just because our service is di different, I don't, I don't interact with them as much as I would like to had I been working with them this year. So you just sort of touched on this, but so as a team leader, you don't get assigned students directly to work with. So what are some of the ways that you're able to stay involved uh, and stay excited with the kids, like in the morning greeting. Um, so one, one example is we also we do morning greeting. So I know kids through doing that. We also do afternoon greeting. It's not really a greeting, but it's more like a goodbye. But we call it afternoon greeting. And so and also from being there last year, I I do know some of the students already. So it's not I'm not too far removed, and it's not it's not too hard for me to strike up conversations because the kids know me and I've seen them before and also through our after school program um, and homework help um, I also am very involved in in that so what are the some uh, what are some of the different programs that you have been able to run at Johnson whether it's an after school program or some other tor sort of event um, so with our after school program uh, and it's, it's neat because we have such a diverse team that we're able to do things like this on uh, Thursdays, uh, we have after school, and that day is called Take Action Thursday. And on that day, uh, one of our one of my teammates or one of the core members that I lead, she knows uh, martial arts. So yeah. she uh, on that day, Take Action Thursday, there's a martial arts lesson that we get to teach the kids. And I think that's cool because I don't know martial arts, and she's the only one on our team. So <laughs> we wouldn't without her being there, the kids would not be able to experience uh, martial arts nor will we be able to provide them that service. So, That's the joy of having a diverse team, right? <laughs> yep. So how are teachers and core members at Johnson working together to make in-class support a successful experience for the students? There's actually been a lot of things. Um, like the teachers are really taking advantage of our core, of the core members in the classroom, um, working on lesson plans together. Um, one of my core members, he is he majored in like Egyptology or some other type of things like that. So in the social studies class, when they were working on hieroglyphics, he was able to come up with a lesson to teach the kids um, because that was that was his field, of ex his expertise. So um, the teachers have really been taking advantage of that and allowing the core members to to be a part of the classroom. I'm sure that's been really a rewarding part of your job than mm -hmm. getting to see that sort of thing happen. But how about specifically to your service? What has been the most rewarding thing that you uh, experienced this year? I think the the most rewarding thing for me is just just seeing the kids and their progress and being able to see how when our team first got in the school and and how it was new for both the students and um, and the core members, but to just to see how all the relationships have grown and um, just the different the different types of relationships that have grown because each of my core members none of them relate to the kids in the same way but they all have great relationships with the kids and just to see that working in action I think that has been very rewarding to see see how how everyone's relationships were at the beginning of the year until to where we are now so so what skill would you say that you've mastered or learned since starting here at City Year uh, and maybe how is that going to be able to help you out in the future 
I think what I learned most is is leading a team and and just just knowing how to do that and being conscious of like the different people on my team, what how to communicate to my team, whether it be me telling them something that they need to do or or whatever, and just just managing a team. I think that's that's really basically is the biggest thing that I'm learning and and what tools and steps that I can take to to manage my team effectively. So what are some of the tools and steps that you have actually taken to lead your team effectively? Um, well, we are a very diverse team and there are, everybody does not work the same. So yeah. my my strategy has been if I could figure out what exactly my the core members need to provide them a structure, the structures and tools. So for example, we have a, a, our in-kinder uh, person. He, he didn't exactly know or he wasn't, it was just very overwhelming for him. So I took that and made a simplified structure for him to be able to use and help to delegate the work so he wasn't overwhelmed. So although it took us a while to get to that, to get to that process, I do think now that we have that structure in place, it has made our service better as a result. Awesome. All right, so Ken, we like to ask all of our, uh, our core members this question. What are you going to do after your city year? That is round two. Uh, <laughs> that is a great question. So I'm currently also looking to come back to the city of Chicago and maybe city of Chicago or work somewhere in the city of network. Um, cause I really enjoy city and the work that we do. And I also am, I, I like, I plan to go to grad school soon and I want to study urban education. So I think city year is the best avenue for that. Um, but as I've been looking up some other things too, but after city year, whether I'm with city or not, it will probably be some work in education or urban education, something like that. So what role would you take in city year? Um, I'm thinking about, uh, uh, just a number of positions. I wouldn't mind being a PM. Um, that would be both. Program manager? Yes, yeah, okay. a program manager. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, becoming a program manager, I think that would be both challenging and and exciting. And also, I'm thinking about to uh, an admissions manager because I think it would be it would be exciting to to be to have a, a direct say in who is who city accepts and things like that. So I think that would be exciting. All right, Kenneth. So our time is almost up. Um, so we also need to give you the boot. So uh, if you can go ahead and grab a question in there and then answer for everybody here to hear. Let's see. That's a good one. That's a good one he grabbed. So my question is, what inspires you daily? Um, I think what inspires me the most is, I think, just my team and, and watching them work and grow with the students because since I don't get to do that, um, allow helping them to be able to do that inspires me so uh, i think that's that's what inspires me the most is, is watching my team grow and helping them to do so well thank you kenneth for coming out and sharing about your city year here uh, you, and coming in with us this evening um before we leave you this evening we'd like you to spotlight the city year chicago blog if you go to cityyearchicago.wordpress.com to check our written features videos and pictures of city year chicago at work this week, we have some pictures with some of our Deloitte corporate breakfast. We are running out of time here, so thanks again for tuning in to City Year, Give a Year, Change the World. Please tune in every weekend or every Wednesday at 6 p.m. to hear more from City Year Chicago, and have a good evening. Thank you.